Hello, welcome to Connie Martinson Talks Books. Okay, you've seen films, you've read books, and you think, I think I could do that myself. Well, if you have, and I am not joking about this, this is a book you must have, because only when you start to read it, you may realize where you're being deficient in character or story. The book is called The Anatomy of Story, 22 Steps to Becoming and Truly a Master Storyteller. It's written by my guest, John Truby, and it is published by Farah strauss -Giroux. Welcome, John. Thank you, Connie. And what a terrific book, and let's begin immediately with what are some of those 22 steps? Well, the 22 steps are really the heart of the book. Uh, they refer to the 22 building blocks in every great story. And it turns out that regardless of what medium that you're working in, what genre you might be working in, mm -hmm. if it's a good story, it will have those 22 steps. I'll give you an example. Uh, the third step is desire. And in a good story, the hero will have a very specific goal that he or she is going to try to accomplish by the end of the story. Now, this goal is extremely important to the quality of the story because it's the spine that the story rests on. So I always tell people, when you're starting off writing the first draft of a story, whether it's for a screenplay or a novel, start by figuring out what your hero's goal is and hang everything off of that. One of the factors you did say he must show or she must show weakness and need. That's another one of the 22 steps, and it actually happens just before the desire line. The weakness need is the wellspring of the whole story. If you don't establish something that's deficient in that main mm -hmm. character, then no growth can occur. And what the audience is most concerned about, even though they don't know it consciously, is they want to see that character grow by the end of the story. And what that means is fulfilling that need, that something that's missing inside that's so deep that it's hurting their life. And if the audience can see that growth, then they will be satisfied, even if the hero doesn't accomplish the goal that they set for themselves. Uh, you do use uh, the Godfather and uh, Don Corleone and his son as sort of both an example and yet comparing them in oddly enough to uh, the Odyssey, the Iliad and the Odyssey mm -hmm. to Homer. That storyline and need and desire, human nature doesn't really change much. No, no. And, and it's interesting that you should focus in on those two steps because a great deal of good storytelling has to do with how those two steps are played out in the story. And in fact, the conflict that often happens between what the character wants and what they need, they're not always the same. And another thing is to who fights whom for what. Right. This is something you want to establish right at the very first premise line that you come up with. Premise is your, your story stated in one line. It's kind of the summary of your storyline, and it, it's really the foundation of the story. And when you get that one line idea that, that makes you think, hey, it would be great to write this story, the first thing that you want to do is figure out who is my main character going to fight? because everything comes off of that central conflict. But what you just said about the premise and the storyline, that's what a writer has to pitch when he goes into an office. Exactly. The premise is very underestimated by writers. In fact, it's probably the most difficult step in the entire writing process. Not character, not plot, not dialogue. That one-line idea is not only what you pitch, it is really the, the, the source of the whole story. It's the, I refer to it in the book as the gold. You've got to find a premise line that's so original that nobody else has done it and it's unique to you because Hollywood and publishing houses aren't interested in copies of things yeah. that have been done before. They want something that's different. And if you don't make, come up with a premise line that's different right at the beginning, Nothing you do later on will make a difference because the whole story will collapse. As you're getting further into that premise, you talk about the character web, and you use Hamlet again. I mean, the wonderful thing about this book, if no one has read any of those books, they're going to learn about them in this book. Well, it, it, 
I'm so glad you mentioned that because one of the things that was important for me was comp using story examples that cover the entire range from mm -hmm. classics of great to Tootsie. Exactly. Yeah. You, you go. You get Hamlet. You get the Harry Potter stories, Be because the the techniques of great storytelling are the same regardless of which medium you're working in or what the level. You may be writing a, a simple children's story, but what makes a great story is going to be the same. And the character web that you pointed out is extremely important. Most writers, when they're coming up with their characters, they make a fundamental mistake, which is they think of their hero as this separate individual. And the, what they try to do is come up with a, just a whole bunch of character traits that they will apply to this person. Well, those are all superficial. The real key to character is seeing each character, your hero, opponents, and all the other characters. As part of this web, each is connected to the other and each helps to define the other because that way you're only coming up with characters that are absolutely essential to your story. And they have a complete sort of picture within the story. So that I think that's one of the reasons one comes out of a great film feeling sort of satisfied. It's not just catharsis.